Okay, so today's the day that I review the Ritz album, Top of the Line. Now, this album originally came out back in 2016, and surprisingly enough, it had a very decent billboard placement. It placed nine, and amongst the 200 people that entered that list every single week, and with him being on one of the biggest independent record labels ever, that is such an amazing feat to accomplish. And I have to say, Although all these amazing things had happened, and my hat is definitely tipped to him, I slept on this album like nobody's business, and I should not have done that. Amongst all the music that came out in 2016, I was enjoying so much of it, but I wasn't making time for what really mattered. And this album is one that seriously mattered. It covers every single topic that you need to talk about. It talks about being involved in a relationship and dealing with all the struggles that are involved with that. If you see someone hanging out with your girlfriend and you're like, hey, that's not cool, man. He focuses on a topic like that and he builds off of it. He doesn't leave the person. He gets involved with his girlfriend, now his wife, and he explains and talks to her and just wants to get through the issues with her because it wasn't really discussed whether or not she was cheating, but that's what we can assume as listeners because of his lyrical content in the song. And then it goes to addiction and how he struggled with it for years. And then even back to how he is lyrically untouchable. And this album is, for its namesake, definitely what Ritz is. He is the top of the line. No one is touching him. Not a single person in the rap game can replicate what he's done. I dare you to try and find somebody else. Because the second that you can, no one's as smooth as him. No one makes the content that he makes. And no one makes songs like he makes. Many people can make music. Many people go into the studio, sit on the couch, sit in the rolly chairs. Whatever you do when you go into the studio, you listen to the beats and then you work it out and then you write and then you write for hours and then you finally get it. You finally get that song together, you record it and you love it. Ritz does that with every single one of his songs, regardless of the production, regardless of the person he's involved with, regardless of the person who's featured. He puts his all into this music. And that's what a lot of you artists out there are missing. You're missing the passion. That is such a shame with the amount of people that are coming out with flawless content now. Their beats are amazing, but their lyrics suck. The lyrics suck and the beats are amazing. You, you, you hear it all the time, but when the lyrics are amazing and the beats crap, you never hear that, do you? I wonder why that is. Because there are so many people that focus on one central group of artists and how dare you try and go somewhere else and try and find somebody different. What kind of sense does that make? You're okay with these five people that are inside this circle because they bring out an album once a year. Once for this guy, once for this guy, once for this guy, and so on. You need people to fill in that void that actually provide a whole meal to the album. And this is what Ritz does for the entirety of this project. He gives you a seven course meal and lets you feast on it how you decide to do so. Every song on here has a message, even the lyrical ones. Because all of the struggles that he's dealt with from the start of his career in music to when he got signed to Slim American, to when he got signed to Strange Music, to when he started getting more money, to when he started to feel like he wasn't worth it anymore and why would I want to go on tour and do all these things? I thought once I got signed to Strange Music, I'd start bringing in the money. And even he was naive to the fact that after all this happened, it wouldn't come to fruition. After he understood what was going on, he became humble. He was very, very humble, and he still is to this day. He knows that the fans treat him as if he were a role model. He says, I am not that good of a role model, but it is obvious that he can definitely make music that can show off that he can be one. Because many people can look at an addict's story and see that story in themselves, and then in turn bring themselves beyond bring themselves back from the point of no return, and then they themselves can become great. And that is what Ritz is telling everyone with this album. You too can be great. You too can be like me, become top of the line. You just need to do all it is that you can, even when you can't move anymore, even when you can't breathe anymore, even when you feel like you can't think anymore. You can be amazing, just like I can. This album has not given 
me a feeling like I've listened to other albums before. This album is, in my opinion, a classic. This album is untouchable. And every time I've listened to it this week, and every time I will listen to it in the future, I will always remember what exactly he was telling the listeners. Now, many people will listen to an independent artist and see that their underground status is rather impenetrable to most fans and that they do not see anyone else that is greater than them. Now, be that as it may, Ritz wants to become that kind of artist that's seen as a legend above and below the ground. And I see the potential he has with this album. Because if you can go into the if you can go into the studio and reinvent the wheel each time you go back in, why is it that you need to struggle with creating music? He knows that this is his passion. And that's something that these guys are missing. Like I said, they're missing passion. Now, the feature list on this album is rather extensive. Tech Nine, Chris Calico, MJG, E40, Devin the Dude, Mike Posner, um, even one guy that Ritz knows personally, I'm willing to imagine he's affiliated with a clientele group called Cheeto Gambine. And that guy definitely has a lot of down south influences, one of them being Kevin Gates, at least from how he was executing the last quarter of his verse. From what I heard, that's what it sounded like. And although Ritz is from Atlanta, born in PA and raised in Atlanta, he doesn't really execute much of the Atlanta style. Now, some of the beats sound like they were influenced by some Outkast and a little bit of UGK, but his style is more towards the Midwest, and there's nothing wrong with that. He still puts his roots in his heart, and he carries it forward. And that's another thing. Not a lot of people carry the roots that they have. Regardless of where your heart is, where did you lay your heart down with your music? Not where your home is, but where is your music from? A lot of people listen to everyone. Some people even have one-sided ideas that listening to the East Coast is better than the West Coast. Still, after 25 years, 30 years even, there's, it's just a matter of opinion. If you like what you like, then you like what you like. But if you make music, you have to know what style are you trying to execute? Are you trying to sound like Eazy E? Are you trying to sound like Tech 9 Are you trying to sound like Cassius? Are you trying to sound like the Suicide Boys? Or in this case, Triple Six Mafia? Are you trying to sound like T.I.? Maybe David Banner? There are many people that are willing to put a message into their music, but none of them are willing to look into what makes them that person. None of them are willing to make their style independent, and that is what Ritz is doing with this music. He's making his style his own. Like I said, nobody can touch him. He does what he does, and he does it very well. Ritz is a legend. Some people may see him as a legend in the making, but I see his full potential now. He may not be anywhere near his final form, but I gladly pat him on the back and allow him to continue his journey to the end. With that being said, my name is Ethan, otherwise known as Two-Face. This is episode 14 of Claws. We are closely getting to 20 with each time, and I am very, very glad to represent this album and to be wearing my Ritz shirt today. I am very, very happy to be doing this, and I'm very happy to let everyone know about this album. Although I slept on it, I hope and pray that some people go out there and listen to this album. So please, the links below in the description will be all of his albums, up to and beyond this one, because this is an artist that you guys should not ignore. Every time you listen to him, his execution is flawless. His lyricism is undeniable. Please, give him a listen. You will not regret it. Tune in tomorrow when I review Czarface meets Metalface. Until then, peace.